Hi, and thanks for joining the Visit Britain and Tour Radar webinar today. Um, thank you for your patience. We're having a little bit of difficulty, so if you'll give us just one moment um, to get to get started, um, we'll be right back with you. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I do apologize for the delay. We are just having some technical difficulties with our speaker. I so appreciate your patience and just give us one moment. We'll try to get this sorted out. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Again, thank you so much for your patience. We're trying to sort through this as quickly as possible. Just give us a few more moments. Thank you.
Hello? Is that hey, you, Jonathan? Jonathan? Yeah, I'm on the phone. Oh, great. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for your patience. Um, our speaker today is here, so I appreciate you bearing with us. Jonathan, are you able to see the slides? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. You should be able to, to see the slides now. Yeah, I can see them now, yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, again, I do apologize, everybody, for the for the delay. We were having some technical difficulties, um, but our speaker is here, and um, and we will let him uh, take over. Okay, thank you. If you want to uh, put it on the full screen, that'd be great. There we go. Okay, thank you. Again, sorry, everybody, had a bit of technical difficulties and. Uh, so I'm uh, calling in from a phone, so hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. So my name is Jonathan Heisman. I'm the travel trade manager for uh, the US. Um, so I cover every, everywhere across the US. Um, I'm based out of LA, and um, but yeah, so travel a lot all across the US. So today we're just going to kind of give you a bit of a, an update uh, on some of our research we've done recently, um, sort of where we think we are as a nation in terms of uh, tourism and getting uh, Americans to come over to Britain. I'll talk a little bit about what we've been doing with Tor Radar uh, and just cover a few other bits and pieces while I'm here. And uh, hopefully you will know, find it interesting. Okay, next slide. And if you press it again, I should have a little bit of a graphic. So we've come up with a, uh, you know, a, a new sort of style. We're trying to be a little bit more modern. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Okay, so like I said, uh, what we're going to cover, I'm just going to cover a, a little basics for you to start with, some numbers, give you, kind of give you guys a bit of a, an idea on, actually, there's, there's Britain, tiny island, but you know, a lot of information, a lot of uh, uh, some of the products we have, et cetera, um, the roads, the cities, et cetera. You, you don't realize actually how big it is. going to cover some market updates, like I said, some of our strategies that we're planning for this year, um, some of our marketing, and then a, sort of a few key events as well. So next slide, please. Okay, so um, like I said, just like some random numbers here, just kind of give you an idea. Actually, we are we are a great nation. Um, the road ones always are one I like to pick out. Uh, you know, although we do drive on the other side of the road, um, it, it is a great way to explore. You know, even if uh, you have guests that aren't keen on on driving themselves, having a rental, things like that, then you know, a chauffeur driver uh, is always a great option, and you can really explore some of the less known areas. Uh, we have 32 UNESCO sites. Um, that's actually a lot more than the U.S. So if you think uh, we're literally a third of the size of California, uh, the U.S. has 24 in total, and we actually have 32. So, you know, these include some classics like the city of Bath and Stonehenge, um, but some of the lesser-known ones, like there's a, there's a village in the south of Glasgow called New Lanark, which is actually uh, very famous for uh, being a cotton uh, village, and also in London we have the old naval. Uh, the old Royal Naval College of Greenwich, which is a great place to visit. Uh, you know, when you think of uh, Britain as well, you can't help but think of some pubs. Uh, the oldest pub being uh, the Ye Old Fighting Cocks, which is in uh, say, the city of St. Albans, uh, and that dates from around 1600. Now, if we're talking about inns, you know, slightly different than a pub, um, but inns were around before pubs, and we have uh, the oldest inn, we, we believe, is the old ferry boat at St. Ives in Cambridgeshire. Uh, and the records show that it's actually been serving alcohol since uh, 560 AD. And then finally, I just mentioned that some train stations, we're always promoting trains. Trains are a really, really great way to travel around Britain. Um, and, you know, it just shows you that actually we have 2,563 stations. So plenty of options, a uh, great way to go. Okay, next slide. Okay, yeah, that's great. And if you press it, no, you can, you can carry on. Uh, next one. And then if you press it one more time, we should have some nice little uh, graphics there as well. So I'm going to give you a quick update, and uh, I apologize if uh, I, I ramble a little bit, but I'll try and make it as interesting as possible, because we've done a lot of research recently, and we just want to share this with you guys so you understand where we believe we are as a nation, uh, trying to get you know travelers to, to, to Britain and for you guys 
understand uh, maybe a bit more about your clientele or people out there that are, are looking to travel. So most of our updates uh, are from research, speaking to our tour operators across the country. Um, many of the advisors at 2023 numbers this year, already close to the 2019 levels, um, which is great to hear. You know, we weren't expecting such a quick response. Uh, but we have found that the U.S. is actually the strongest market returning to Britain in both numbers and value. So, you know, there's great opportunities here. Uh, now, being totally transparent, the service industry is not fully recovered in Britain, as with the rest of the world. Um, but we found that's not deterred many of the American travelers. Now, we totally understand that, uh, are you okay? <laughs> we totally understand that, uh, that most of the visitors want to spend time in London. Uh, but we are finding that many are looking to get outside of the capital. Uh, and other major cities are visiting, and they they want to explore the lesser known regions, which is why we're always looking to promote uh, this along with seasonality. Uh, we're also noticing that, uh, like uh, London, uh, many will want to stay in London, but then they'll do a lot of day trips outside of London. So London will be the base. Uh, and then what we found with the uh, North American travelers is that um, if you do like a two hour uh, circle around the US, around, sorry, the um, around London, Anywhere you can reach within two hours, it's a great uh, travel time to spend a day. Now, you'd be actually quite surprised about how far you can get with the train network within two hours. Um, some examples for this, you can get to Manchester, Liverpool, and even York within two hours. So you could literally spend a, a day in York if you wanted. We'd also always recommend that it, you know, spending longer. Uh, but it's a, you know, a great option, especially with the train. We're finding that COVID is no longer front of mind with the, the relaxed rules. Um, Flight prices, you know, started high once traveled up, travel opened up again, but we are finding that actually this year, towards sort of middle end of this year, they are starting to become a bit more competitive. Prices are coming down a little bit. Um, that may be also because a, a few players have started to enter the game, such as JetBlue launched a couple of years ago, uh, direct flights predominantly from the East Coast. And then um, in a few months' time, actually, Norse Airways uh, taken over from Norwegian, and they're going to start flying direct um, into London Gatwick this year from the range of cities. Uh, okay, if you want to get to the next slide. And one more. And there we go. Okay, uh, so carrying on. Uh, some popular trends we're noticing are a lot of multi generational travel, uh, more research led approaches, especially with a luxury seg segment as well, uh, private boutique tours are actually being one of the biggest requests we're finding at the moment. Um, you know, this may be due to the COVID effect or maybe because uh, many have extra disposable income. Uh, we always try to promote, like I said, off-season travel. And actually, we're finding this actually becoming very popular at the moment because costs are so much lower. You know, I imagine a lot of your guests will, you know, the cost of traveling in the summer, especially at the moment, is quite high. Whereas if you kind of do the, uh, the shorter season, you go in spring and, spring and autumn, then it's the costs drop drastically. One word coming up is leisure. Now, this is where you have a work trip, but you want to extend uh, the trip so you could experience more of the local culture. Uh, and lastly, immersive experiences being requested. This could be anything from you know, making the guests feel like they're part of the local culture, such as baking local delicacies or partaking in local traditions, etc. That's People are wanting to do that a lot more, we're finding. Uh, more niche trends, spending time with locals through activities, uh, slow travel, uh, as well as uh, with Britain, they do a film and TV location. That's always been popular, and we think that's carry on being popular. And then workcations are kind of the opposite to pleasure. That's where people wish to extend their vacation to actually work from the location, which is, you know, with remote working, is much more available today. Uh, even booze travel is another random one we're starting to see, which is interesting, because if you're going to go to Britain, you know, and the pubs are quite a requested uh, part of the itinerary. And then finally, there's something we call rebel spending. Now, uh, this is those clients who have the money to burn and price is no object. Um, so with travel limited over the last few years, again, this is f kind of finding major traction, uh, kind of part of the uh, private boutique tour style as well. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we did um, a, a bit of research, and I apologize, there's a lot of information here, so I won't cover too much of it, um, but I'm, we're happy to share it if anybody wants to you know, delve even further into it. But we re uh, produced a research piece to find the most valuable travel traveler for the recovery of Britain, um, which results in us focusing on the experience 
seeker. Now, this is a person or persons who are looking to fully fill their time in Britain. You know, they're passionate. They love discovering authentic and unique experiences. They also love local foods and drinks. And it's important uh, to connect them with uh, iconic attractions as well. It's like usually in the cities, you know, the classics, the big bends, the uh, houses of the parliament, things like that. They still want to do that, but then they do also want to get out of the cities uh, and do something fun, often around the coast and country locations. So yeah, a lot of information there. I'm not going to cover it all, um, but I just wanted to sort of give you guys a, a quick overview. Okay, next slide, please. Now, we're delighted that the Britain has partnered with Tour Raider again on a, on a joint digital campaign again this year. Um, we're inviting visitors to come see things differently in Britain. This is showcasing, it is a dynamic, exciting and exclusive location. Uh, this is part of the UK government's great campaign uh, and it encourages consumers and travel advisors alike to look at Britain with fresh eyes. Uh, the, the approach encourages travelers to explore Britain in new ways, discovering new cities, experiencing icons with a modern twist uh, and diving into the breathtaking outdoors like never before. Um, so there's a couple of banners, etc. you would have seen hopefully uh, around the tour website, the tour radar website and, and emails, etc. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, we're highlighting major events. Uh, back one more. There we go. Okay, we're highlighting major events like the coronation of King Charles III, which is less than 30 years away, uh, on May the 6th. And Liverpool is actually hosting Eurovision Song Contest on behalf of Ukraine this year. Uh, if you didn't know, Liverpool is actually Britain's UNESCO City of Music, and they're getting ready for an all-out party to host the Eurovision 67th contest on half, half of the, behalf of the Ukraine, like I said. And that's actually from May 9th to 13th. Uh, if you don't know it, Google it. It's a very bizarre uh, event that's been going on for many years, and we've always been very much part of that tradition. Uh, visitors can also catch the 25th anniversary of the Liverpool Bicentennial, uh, which is actually the UK's largest contemporary arts festival taking place across the city from the 10th of June to the 17th of September. So it's uh, all over the summer. Uh, during the campaign, we're also highlighting bookable products from companies such as CIE Tours, Collect, Globus, Trafalgar, and more. Uh, so close your eyes and imagine your client strolling through a cutting edge art gallery, you know, watching a groundbreaking bid performance in London, taking a nature tour with a historical spin, or channeling that inner Gordon Ramsay at a food festival or relaxing at a, a wellness retreat. You know, these are just a, a few examples of the endless options awaiting for them when they arrive. So, you know, let's get your clients inspired, uh, let's get them packed, and, you know, so they can come see things, see things differently in Britain in 2023. Okay, next slide. So you may or may not uh, come across another marketing campaign we're doing in the uh, in North America, in USA and Canada. And this one's called uh, Fake Brit Till You Make It. And actually highlights the richness of Britain's uh, regional diversity. Uh, the phrase campaign, the phrase campaign, advertising campaign, sorry, gets underway with a variety of local phrases alongside destinations across Britain. Uh, we have a series of short films to see Brits sharing a, a warm welcome in their local accents and dialect, uh, promoting their destinations, encouraging visitors to come and explore for themselves. You know, we have a, a new online game on Visit Britain's consumer website on mobile, though. You need to do it on the mobile because it's uh, interactive and uh, it's the easiest way to go. And it's where, um, where players can go and have fun and basically you can try and practice the accents. And some of you may be really good at it, some of you may not. You know, I'm not going to attempt any of them right now, but... Uh, it is a little bit of good fun, so why not? And if we go to the next slide, hopefully it will work. If you press play, I'm hoping the sound will work. So this is just another little campaign we have going. And if the, uh, the sound doesn't, doesn't work, I apologize. But it's basically saying uh, we have a campaign around tea. So if you come to Britain, you can, uh, we, we've had some specialist teas made. So it may not work, I wasn't too sure on this, but I chucked it in on the hope that it will. So I'll, uh, I'll move on. Um, and then lastly, I kind of just want to cover a couple of key events because obviously there's always a lot going on with Britain and we have lots of stuff. Like I said, we've already covered it. So the coronation's a big event this year and the Eurovision. Uh, a couple of things obviously that are very, very popular with the American market. Um, I've highlighted in bold there. So obviously like Chelsea Flower Show, we get a lot of information, uh, a lot of requests about anything sporting. So Wimbledon tennis, Formula One Grand Prix, 
the Open Championship with the golf, etc. Military tattoo. This is uh, a a military band um, experience, basically all around the music that the military makes, and it's uh, actually I've not been, but everybody who goes is obviously amazing. So we we are constantly getting people reaching out to us around. You know, soon it will be people want to know more about it. And then the other one is up in Edinburgh as well as the Fringe Festival. This one's really, really good as well. If, you, if you're interested in sort of arts or guests, sorry, that are in, in interested in arts, then it's a, a great opportunity for them to go because they have everything from comedy to paintings to uh, storytelling. It, it is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, we have stuff going on all year round. Uh, if you check out our website, et cetera, there is a, a dedicated page to events. Um, but, you know, we're always here to, to discuss and, and and give you advice if you, if you have guests that are interested in different events. Uh, if you go on the next page, and here's just a few things if you um, want to jot them down. Uh, this is just a great key resource. We do have a lot. You know, our, our corporate website is fantastic. Uh, we've been updating it, so it is all new now. Uh, we have a lot of um, on the consumer website is great as well if you send your clients there. But there's also a trade website for yourselves. Uh, we have an, an image and asset library, so if you do need some pictures, etc., that you can check that out. It's free to join and download. The Visit Britain shop now is a, a great opportunity there to uh, get some commission on certain products. So you can sign up as a as a trade representative uh, and actually buy a lot of the like. You'll, you'll find a lot of the classic uh, places to visit through there. So places like Tower of London and things like that, you'll often find. Um, but then you may find some interesting stuff as well. And it's not just around London. It's going to be around the whole of the UK. There's a bit about visas. If I, you shouldn't need them for the US, but I will quickly cover uh, something that you may have heard about. Um, bear with me one second. I'll find it now. But it basically, they are going to bring in like an Esther style uh, next year. So like, if you know that Brits, for example, coming to the US have to pay for an Esther, um, they're bringing something similar into the UK. Again, it's not going to be a lot of money. It's not going to deter people from coming, um, but it's just something that you have to be aware of um, moving forward for 2023. And this is going to be for all countries that don't require a visa. If you need a visa for, you know, like a country like India, for example, requires visas, that stays normal. Countries like the US and Canada, you'll have to apply for a visa, uh, an ESTA, which I think is going to have a three or four year uh, lifeline. And I think it's, I, Guessing, I can't have the information in front of me, but it's going to be something like twenty, thirty dollars, something like that. And like I said, the events uh, has a page there as well. So if you want to skip to the last page, and there's me on the left. Um, you can't see me today, but here I am. Uh, so that's my information. I have my colleague Diego, uh, who is, is available as well if I'm unavailable. But feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions. You know, as, as dumb as you may think they are. Please, please just reach out. That's what we're here for. We just want to help you guys. Um, and then if you want to join us on our social media, we welcome that as well. And uh, we always like posting fantastic pictures of Britain and like to try and make everyone jealous and everybody want to come. And that's it. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I do have my, uh, I have a colleague on, online as well who was uh, part of the marketing campaign. So if anybody has any questions on that, I can always refer you over to Lisa. Uh, but happy to answer any questions. So thank you all for listening. And uh, I hope it was all okay. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, that was great. And um, I'm actually headed off to Great Britain myself next week. I've booked an amazing multi-day organized adventure through Tour Radar that will be taking me through England and Scotland. So I am very much looking forward to my 10-day my holiday starting next week um, uh, over there. Um, I don't see any questions coming in right now, but I do want to just let our attendees know if you have any, feel free to post them in the chat and I will uh, ask them of our panelists. In the meantime, um, I'm going to just quickly give a brief uh, demonstration on how you can book these amazing Visit Britain adventures on Tour Radar. So if you are currently signed up, um, for tourradar.com, or whether you're not, I should say, you would come to tourradar.com forward slash agents. And over here in the right, you can see I'm already logged in. If I wasn't logged in, it would be an opportunity for you to click registration and to register as an agent. 
Um, from there, this is our main page that will show you all the fun things that we have going on. You can check out some uh, short uh, videos on how to use our site. You can check out the webinars, and then we'll also post here the um, the latest webinars. So Visit Britain will be up here next if you want to watch that, and then you can watch the other past ones here as well. Um, you can learn a little bit more about our operators and see some of the other agents who are currently using our platform and what they have to say about it. From there, once you're logged in, um, you can either start here and start by typing a destination. So let's say I want to go to Scotland, um, and I'm going to head over and I'm going to take a look at what, what Scotland has to offer. Um, you can start by selecting the length of stay that you would like to do, um, your departure date. You can look at adventure types. Do I want to have group? Do I want private? What sort of guide type do I want? What age range are the travelers? Um, are, do they have a child that's or children that are going to be traveling with them? Um, and then group size. If you want to do groups, we do group trips as well. If you have somebody who says, I definitely want to do sailing or I definitely want to do bicycling, checking out all of our adventure styles is where you're going to want to look. Um, another great thing is that if you are looking at someone who's you know, going to Scotland and they say, I want to go to a particular region, you can make sure that you're finding the tours that go to those particular regions, as well as add in other countries. So maybe they want to do Scotland and England, like I did, and then you can see all of the offers that, um, that are there. So I like this one from Trafalgar. I love that it's on sale. I'm going to click through and check out some of the details about the tour. Um, you always know when you're logged in if you see this headphone. So please make sure as an agent that you see the headphone um, when you are uh, looking at the site and then especially when you're going to make a booking. So now I'm on the tour detail page and I'm going to see all the information uh, that's that is pertinent about about the trip. I'm going to see the I'm going to see the tour operator. I'm going to see the group size. Um, if it's a group tour, I'm going to see all the places I'm going to visit and I can look at some amazing pictures. I'll see a map um, with the uh, uh, of where I'm going to go and how the journey is going to go. Um, and then I can even dive down deeper into the itinerary and, and what I'm going to see by day. You'll find down here what's included and what's not included. More information on where the guests would stay, some customer photos, and as well as reviews. This particular tour cannot be requested as private, but there are tours if you did want to request as private um, that you can that you can do so. Let's see if this one has it. Um, request as private. So if you wanted to request a tour as private, maybe you've got a small group. Um, and you want all 32 or all 30 people to be um, in your group, or you've got a group of two or a family of four that want to go, you would just come here, click request, select request as private, fill in the details, request private tour. Once you've done that, you're going to find that information back in your dashboard. So anytime you ask an operator a question, you'll just come over to your bookings tab and you'll see your open questions here. Um, and then that way you can easily communicate with the operators before making your booking. If a booking is confirmed, you will see that it says confirmed and you'll have the details all about the booking that's happening as well as the commission that you're going to earn. And if, um, if just a couple more things, because I want to be cognizant of time, you can download the brochure and you can email it to your clients and it will have your company logo on here if you've uploaded it in your partner portal. And if you want to share with them a link um, so that they book it on their own, you would share this link here. This has your unique code um, and then they would book this tour and you would get still that commission credit for it. It would also show up in your tour radar agent account so you can track and see um, what clients are booking based off of the links that you're sharing. This is great if you know that you've got a client who wants to check out a number of tours or if you have an active social media site and you want to post recommendations um, on social media. Um, that's kind of the highlights of booking uh, Visit Britain on Tour Radar. We do have, um, as I showed on the front page, we do have other uh, webinar tutorials that you can access at your own to learn more about um, booking with Tour Radar. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at agents at tourradar.com. 
with that, if there are no questions, um, I I have one question for Jonathan. I know that the London Marathon is coming up on April 23rd, um, which happens to be my birthday and the reason that I'm going. How are you guys, um, what are you expecting in regards to, to travelers, out of country travelers, and, and um, what are your expectations for the marathon? <laughs> Great, no one's ever asked you that. Do you want some interest <laughs> Um, is it, is it a, I guess it's that, a, is it a big um, travel, you know, travel event. You talked about travel events, so I'm curious: is this sure. a big travel event? Um, I think really, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big international event because obviously you get a lot of travelers from all over the world that want to participate. Um, I don't think people are going to go just to watch, but definitely, uh, you know, it's going to be popular. You know, people from all the world flying in. Great, great to be part of it. I mean, if you're there, I think it's fantastic. Just bear in mind. Um, what I will say with events like this, do your research before, figure out which roads and which um, public transport is going to be affected because it's such a big event that it, you know, there, there will be some closures around. Um, yeah. But if you can get out and be part of it and watch some of it or be in a good location, then yeah, it'd be great. Great atmosphere. Um, it, the London Marathon is always great. Nice. Well, we're going because we're participating in it. So, <laughs> um, oh, but thank you. Well, good luck. Thank good luck with that. I hope you do well. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us today. And again, apologies to our attendees for the technical difficulties, but we thank you for bearing with us and, and staying online throughout the webinar. And we look forward um, to sending your clients on life enriching adventures. Um, and uh, perhaps that will be in Great Britain. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Lou.